let's cut right to the chase. I have an amazing idea in my brain and I'm going to take you along the journey of turning a little brain baby into a physical object. So here's a sketch of the idea that I have. It's a Burberry inspired corset and in my dreams there is a matching bucket hat but we will talk about that another day. Today is all about the corset. Here's like a diagram of the different pieces of the corset. So I'm thinking of just doing like a basic rectangle shape. At the ends of the rectangle, I will be inserting like the kind of shoelace holes um, for our cord that we will lace up. And then at the bottom, I wanna add two half triangles to make the shape a little bit more interesting. It'll kind of like hug our hips a little better and um, overall just have a better shape. The first thing that occurred to me is how do I translate this Burberry pattern of my dreams into a crochet pattern. So this is like my proof of concept that I came up with. Um, and I basically just kind of had to dumb down the uh, original reference pattern um, into just a more manageable, easy pattern, I guess. So this is what I came up with. I kind of tried like a bunch of different things, but basically this just proves that what I have in my brain like doesn't look like sh And I overall like what I came up with. So now that I've sort of proved that I like the pattern and the colors that I'm using, um, now we can go on to measuring. Here are some things that I'm taking into consideration while I measure. Number one, I will be adding some extra length to the initial rectangular bodice. So I will be adding just a little bit of length on each side for my little like shoelace holes. Um, and then I also want to take into consideration that I don't want it to be too small that I can't wrap it around myself, but I also don't want it to be too big that when you like tie it up, it's like the two sides just like meet awkwardly, you know? So I decided that I'm going to be doing 27 inches width wise, and I think that should give me some nice wiggle room. For the length, I'm going to do 12 inches. Hopefully this fits me. If it doesn't, I'm gonna pull my hair out. So I'm using a size four millimeter crochet hook for this, some scissors and some measuring tape to make sure all my measurements are correct. Some stitch markers to hold some stuff together, a tapestry needle if that tickles your fancy. And I'm using one ball of yarn for each color. So I'm using a red ball of yarn, a light brown ball of yarn, a dark brown ball of yarn, and a white or a cream ball of yarn. So I winded up chaining 90 chains plus one to get to 27 inches, and I am just crocheting a giant rectangle. The most important part though is to get the colors correct. So I did start off my first row with a light brown yarn, but the pattern is one row of dark brown, one row of light brown, one row of dark brown, then a one row of white, one row of dark brown, four rows of light brown, a row of red, and then four rows of light brown. Then we go back into the dark brown, light brown, dark brown, white, dark brown, four rows of light brown, one row of red, four rows of light brown again. I'll leave this in the description so you can refer back to it. We're literally just making a big rectangle and I'm just going to crochet in this color pattern until I hit 12 inches in length. This is all in single crochet in case I didn't mention that. To switch colors, I just stick my hook into the last stitch and then I yarn over with the color that I'm currently using and the new color that I would like to incorporate. And then I pull through that stitch with both colors and then I just yarn over with the new color and I pull through um, both loops of yarn on my hook then I just chain one, turn my work, and then I crochet with the new color. And don't forget to cut off the color that you were just using. Um, just leave like an inch. And when we add our trim, all of our loose ends will get tucked in so we don't have to weave in like 50,000 loose ends because I'm a lazy crocheter and I don't want to do that. And here is me, I'm just crocheting my heart out. All right, so this is what I have. I, again, I just crocheted till I had 12 inches in length. So this is what my corset is looking like thus far. So I'm gonna add these little half triangles at the bottom of the corset. And I tried making them in the color pattern, 
Um, and it just looked really bad. So then I just decided to do it all in one color and hope it looks good. Now I'm going to show you how to make the half triangles that will go on the bottom of the corset. Of course, we are starting off with a slip knot and then we're going to chain three. I'm then going to single crochet in the first chain, which is the closest chain to our slip knot. And that counts as our first row. Then we're going to chain one and turn our work. And we're going to single crochet in that first stitch and then put two single crochets in the second stitch. And that is kind of the pattern that we will be following. You want to keep one side completely flat and then we want to increase on the other side and that's what's gonna give us that half triangle look. I just repeated these same steps, increasing on one side and not increasing on the other side of the triangle. And I just repeated this pattern until I had 13 stitches on my top row. And then I'm chaining one and leaving a good amount of yarn as my tail. So that way I can use that to seam this onto the corset. And I'm just using my stitch marker to attach it and I'm trying to line up all of the stitches correctly together. So I counted 13 stitches over on the corset. That's where I put my stitch marker and attached my little triangle. And then I'm just using my favorite seaming method, which is just slip stitching each piece together and then weaving in whatever yarn I have left over. So I started making the trim and it's lovely and it looks great, but you know, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to pull it apart because I forgot that I wanted vertical lines. Basically, I'm just gonna slip stitch vertical lines. I'll do a little montage, rip this apart, cry a little bit, okay, bye. Again, I'm using a slip stitching method to put the vertical lines on. Basically, the pattern goes to dark brown lines, one red line, two dark brown lines, one red line, and the dark brown lines are two stitches apart, and between the red and dark brown lines are four stitches apart, and I just tried to slip stitch these lines as straight as I possibly could. Also, don't forget to slip stitch down your little triangle. They need a little bit of detail on them. So it's the next day, and I finished my main piece. Now I'm going to be adding a half double crochet trim around the entire piece and that's going to help me hide my ends that I really don't want to weave in and it's also just going to give me a nice base on the sides for when I make my little like shoe shoelace holes I guess that's what I'm going to call them. Okay, so the trim is done, and now it's time to add our little corset shoelace hole situation. All right, so I just attached my yarn. I'm going to half double crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip two stitches, and then in like the third stitch over, I'm going to half double crochet and like pull it just like nice and tight. You really want this to be like nice and taut. And yeah, then I'm just going to chain one, half double crochet, skip over two, half double crochet, keep it nice and tight, chain one, skip over two, Half double crochet. And then we have our little corset holes, which you can't really see. But once we put the cord in, they're going to stretch. Okay, so I am so close to being done. I just have to make the cord for the corset. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna do a chain stitch and we're just gonna see how that looks. You will need approximately this amount of cord, make more than you think you need. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna go lace this up and cue montage. 
My final closing thoughts are I could have made this a little bit smaller so I could have a little bit more of a snatch. I can breathe in this though, so that is a plus. Also, I could have made my triangles at the bottom a lot more dramatic as well, and I feel like that really would have added to the piece. Of course, I can nitpick this all day, but overall, I really like how this turned out, and I think I really accomplished what I was going for.